Oh, hello, good morning. Yeah. Good morning, good morning. Yeah. Okay, good morning, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> nice to see you again. Yeah. It's now three years since I was here last time, yeah. so it's really nice to be back again. Yeah. Sometimes the world gets in the way, the COVID gets in the way, all the impermanence and it's, uh, all the problems of the world, they kind of hinder us from doing good things. Uh, so it's glad to be back on track again. Yeah, it's really nice. Uh, <laughs> next time is COVID, I think we just t t f ignore COVID and we just carry on like usual because it's kind of, otherwise uh, we never get anywhere, right? We kind of get <laughs> so this is kind of part of the problem. So uh, anyway, it's wonderful to be here again uh, and among all the uh, Dhamma friends. Uh, one of the great things about being a Buddhist monk, whenever you travel around the world, you meet so many good people. Uh, and uh, it's the same thing in KL, same thing in Australia, same thing everywhere, and that's really wonderful. Uh, the world has many more good people than you would think well, by looking at the news. If you look at the news, <laughs> it seems very bad, uh, but the reality is actually much better than that, uh, which is great. Uh. So, uh, is, uh, is this everyone, Bobby? Uh, has everyone arrived? Uh, every, every single person? Uh, no, no, <laughs> coming later on, okay. So this, these are the keen people who want to take part in the meditations, that's wonderful. Uh, and I will give a little bit more of an introduction later on when we start with the suttas, uh, and then we can uh, discuss in more detail about the suttas. Uh, um, Bobby, you, you mentioned there was going to be a booklet for me as well, a physical booklet. Is that uh, available? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Extra charge, uh, yeah, okay. Uh. <laughs> For whom? Who, who's going to be charged? I <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you so much. That's great. All right. Oh, this is a long time ago. See that? <laughs> Seeing the picture is a long time ago. See, impermanence. Yeah, see there. there, there. <laughs> oh, scary. Okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'll just. Um, just to start off, I'll just give a little bit of introduction about meditation practice, uh, and then we can do some meditation together. Um, the idea with a course like this is going to be very kind of heavily uh, focused on the suttas, on teaching. But it's always nice to do some meditation together, uh, especially in the beginning of the day when you are reasonably fresh and clear, uh, and then we can focus on the suttas later on. I think it's always a nice combination to do both. Uh, but uh, the practice of Buddhism is much more than meditation practice. Yeah, the practice of Buddhism is all about how we deal with things moment to moment, uh, yeah, all the time, how we treat each other, all of these kind of things. Uh, so when we think about Buddhist practice is not really... Meditation is only one aspect of it. Uh, and how we treat each other with kindness, this is actually much more, even more important than the meditation practice itself. Uh, so everything is practice. Uh, everything we do is practice. Uh, so don't think that uh, you know this is just the practical part uh, and everything else is theory. It is not really like that. Uh. But um, meditation is still very important, uh, especially if you want to go a long way on this path. Uh, yeah, meditation is where we can access an alternative reality. Uh, we can go beyond the. Uh, impermanent and unreliable sensory world that we normally are stuck in. Uh, and uh, it is so exciting, the idea of meditation practice, uh, because it elevates you out of the troubles of the world uh, and into a larger reality. This is kind of what this uh, meditation really is about at the end of the day. Uh. But to get there can be quite tricky. Yeah, <laughs> Many of you have been practicing meditation for a long time. And it doesn't mean that you had very profound meditation experiences. Uh, very often we kind of struggle at the very beginning. Uh, and uh, so what I want to do is just to kind of lay down some very basic ideas about meditation practice uh, so that we have some ground rules, if you like, or ground ideas uh, that can sustain the practice uh, in the long run. Uh. And very often it is those basic things uh, yeah, that are the most important ones. Uh. If you get the basic things right, uh, then usually the whole practice just unfolds almost automatically. Uh. So get the basic things right. Uh, that is what matters. Uh, you don't need to worry too much about what happens afterwards because it kind of just uh, works, uh, right? Uh, and because it just works, it actually is quite, uh, quite nice. Uh, mm. Ding. Okay. <laughs> so 
come back, coming back to the uh, basics is just so important. Get that right, and then the path tends to unfold. Uh, and I always like to tell people when I teach meditation practice uh, that this is actually how the Buddha taught meditation. Yeah, he says uh, in one of my favorite suttas, uh, actually every sutta is my favorite anyway, uh, it, w <laughs> it doesn't really mean very much when I say that. Uh, but when he what he says is that it is not meditation practice is not to be done by an act of will. Uh, yeah, he, lit, he says that quite specifically. Uh, and I always remember when Ajahn Brahm used to say to me, "Ah, you don't, you just relax, don't do anything, just sit back and just bang, you know, somebody happens." Uh, <laughs> I used to think he was joking. What do you mean? It ha may happen to you. It doesn't happen to me. <laughs> what is going on here? Uh, and then I came to the suttas, and I realized, actually, the Buddha was talking in exactly the same way. Uh, yeah? No chetana. Chetana does not need to be applied uh, for meditation practice to work. Chetana means intention. Chetana means will. Uh, chetana means the doing side of the mind. Uh, don't have to do those things. Uh, and this is very, very powerful. Uh, because what that means is that if we are able to establish the foundations in the right way, if we can kind of get the mind into the kind of the right attitude at the beginning, yeah, if we're able to relax properly, yeah, then the meditation is really just a matter of sitting back and waiting. Yeah. And isn't that beautiful? Yeah? Isn't that a wonderful thing? Yeah? Because if really meditation is about sitting back and waiting, it means that we can relax, right? Uh, we can enjoy. Yeah. We don't have to strive anymore. So much of our lives is about striving. Yeah? And I know that I'm sure many of you here are very hard strivers. Uh, yeah, I'm sure, because this, the world is full of hard strivers. Uh, the idea that we have to do, we have to act, study hard, work hard, then you will have success, uh, then you will be happy? No, then you will die. <laughs> That's the problem. You strive and strive and strive, and then you die, right? Uh, and you wonder why all that striving here. Yeah? No happiness is found somewhere else. Uh, it is found when we can relax, when we can let go of all that striving, uh, and we can enjoy the path of meditation instead. Uh. So how can we let go of all that striving? This is one of those most very interesting questions. Uh, the idea of actually being able to relax and really being able to let go. Uh. How can we do that? Uh. And the way to do that is to kind of have the right attitude when we set out. Uh. And this is what I want to talk very, very briefly about. We're going to get into the meditation in a second here. The right attitude is two things. Uh. The first thing is when you sit down, you want to make sure your mind is roughly in the right place. Uh, yeah, you don't feel a lot of upset or ill will or these kind of things. You don't feel incredibly restless. You don't have you know, very strong desires that kind of lead you astray. Uh, your mind is reasonably even. Uh, if your mind is not reasonably even, no need to even sit down to meditate. Just go and have a cup of tea, listen to some music, go for a walk. <laughs> Do something else, listen to a talk maybe, put on some chanting, whatever it is that you want to do. But don't sit down to meditate if your mind is not reason at least reasonably balanced. Yeah, A little bit of desire is okay, a little bit of restlessness is fine, but if it's too much, you're just going to ask for trouble. So first of all, do something else. So this is the beginning. So then you, And then you want to establish your mind into a reasonably positive state. I'll come to this later on. But in the meantime, uh, what you want to do is to be able to relax. Uh, and you want to be able to relax, and you want to be in the present uh, at the same time. Uh, and this is really the critical part, relaxing and also being in the present. Uh, being in the present means being mindful, uh, and relaxing means being at ease. Uh, there's no way you're going to have success in a meditation unless you are really at ease, uh, really enjoying what is going on here. Uh. So how can we do this? Uh, and uh, one uh, way that I like to teach this, uh, yeah, and this is all about kind of attitudes and how we think about meditation practice, uh, but one of my ways of thinking about this is like you're sitting in an armchair. Uh, yeah, so imagine that you have been to work uh, and you had a long day's work behind you. You come back home, uh, and how do you feel? Well, you probably feel a bit tired, right? Maybe some days you feel okay, but some days you probably feel tired after a long day's work. Yeah. I know what it's like sometimes a long day's work, even though a monk sometimes I know what it feels like. Yeah. And I certainly have seen people being exhausted. Yeah. 
I remember my own father, he was always working really, really hard uh, and uh, come back home and sometimes really exhausted after a long day's work. Yeah. And uh, so what happens when you do that? Well, what happens when you come back home is sometimes you just want to relax. Yeah? You just want to sit down and so what you do, you go to your, maybe your favorite armchair. Uh, you sit down in your armchair, uh, you close your eyes uh, and you lean back. Uh, and then what do you do? Uh, what do you do when you lean back after a long day's work and you're really tired? Uh, well, you don't, don't do anything, right? Uh, you do absolutely nothing. You just you really relax. And this is kind of the point. Uh, when you are really tired uh, and you want to relax, uh, you don't do anything. Uh, in fact, what you do is you just allow things to be. That is the whole point of relaxing when you're tired. Uh, you allow the mind to kind of unwind. Wind, uh, you allow the mind to run on uh, according to wherever it wants to run on. Uh, you know, you, under see what, you understand what I'm talking about? Yeah? You don't try very hard to relax uh, when you are in that armchair. You allow these things to go because that is how the mind regains its energy. Uh, that is how you lose your tiredness. Uh, yeah? And in exactly the same way, uh, when we meditate, uh, it's useful to remember this idea of just relaxing in an armchair. Uh, yeah? Just sitting back, uh, not doing anything at all, but just allowing the the world, the mind, to go on by itself uh, without really doing anything. Yeah. And what happens, then is hap what happens then is exactly the same thing that happens when you are sitting in that armchair. Yeah. What happens is that your energy starts to come back, yeah. the tiredness of mind starts to dissipate, uh, and then after a while you feel better. And then when you feel better, what happens? Well, then you get up and then you carry on with the duties of your ordinary life. Uh. Yeah, so Im imagine yourself being in that armchair, uh, just relaxing, not doing anything at all. Uh. You are not meditating, uh, right? Uh, forget the word meditation, because th the moment you think about the word meditation, you think there's something you have to do. I have to do meditation, right? Uh, so words can be very detrimental, uh, because once you have a word, you think that this word means that a certain activity that you have to do. No, forget about the words. Uh, give it new labels. Uh, Look at it in a new way, with fresh eyes. Uh, and one of those fresh eyes is to think about this process uh, as a process of relaxation, of enjoying yourself, uh, of just relaxing, being at ease. Uh, yeah? This is all about letting go, really. Uh, and as you do that, then you find that ease of the mind, which is conducive for meditation practice. Uh, so this is what this is about. Uh, but there is one more factor to this. Uh, because if all you do is sit back and you just don't do anything at all, uh, sometimes the mind just carries on endlessly proliferating. People always say, oh, if I do that, I just think for two hours and nothing happens. Uh, so there's something else about meditation that makes the meditation work. Uh, and that is the idea of enjoying what you are doing. Uh. So it's not just the idea of sitting in an armchair, uh, but it's also like the idea of sitting in the armchair and watching the sunset uh, at the same time. Uh. Yeah, because when you're watching a sunset, uh, you are enjoying what you're doing. Uh. The sunset is something beautiful. It is not something that you have to force yourself to look at. Yeah, because it is naturally beautiful, your eyes are drawn towards that sunset. Uh. So you're able to relax, uh, and you're able to be aware, and you're able to enjoy all at the same time. Uh. So the critical thing with meditation here is to learn to enjoy what is happening here. So if you can really relax, uh, and you can also enjoy the process, enjoy the peace, looking at the good side of meditation practice, uh, when these things come together, that is where it becomes powerful. Uh, enjoying and relaxing at the same time. This is the critical thing here. So this is going to be the emphasis or emphasis of this uh, of these meditations that we do every morning for maybe about 45 to 50 minutes or so, uh, and this is kind of the uh, the background for this. Uh. So I'm not going to say much more than that. There is much more to be said about how to learn to enjoy and all of these kind of things, and I will talk about this later on when we have more time. And you're very welcome to ask about meditation as well. I want you to have plenty of opportunities to ask questions and have a bit of discussion, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I think for now we can uh, start with this, uh, and then we can sort of see uh, what happens as we uh, as we carry as we go along. Yeah. So now let's do some 
uh, meditation together uh, and I'll give a little bit of guidance as we go along and we'll see what happens. So. Please come in. <laughs> Drink will be great. Yeah, maybe just a glass of water. That would be perfect. A glass of water is plenty. Yeah. Okay, everyone. So. When you sit down uh, and you start your meditation, then uh, always start by closing your eyes. Uh, one of the great things about closing the eyes is that you shut out so much of the world, uh, so much of the input straight away disappears, uh, and it means you actually feel more peaceful right away. Uh. And then uh, as you shut out the eyes, uh, it means you can feel your body uh, much more easily. Uh. So start out by feeling the body uh, to make sure that you are at ease uh, and you're able to sit in your posture for about half an hour or so. Uh. And just keep on feeling the body uh, and uh, once you are comfortable uh, with no pains in the body, uh, also make sure that you are really relaxed. Uh, and even if you just take the whole morning just to relax and be at ease, uh, it is already worthwhile. Uh, letting go of the stress and the tensions, uh, letting go of the anxieties and worries of life, uh, and just enjoying sitting back. Uh, and just enjoying the sense of good company uh, and being in the presence of the Dhamma.
please use the idea of sitting in an armchair uh, after a long day's work uh, just to be able to uh, understand the idea of really letting go uh, the idea of just allowing things to flow uh, because that is what you do when you sit down and relax uh, so just allow the world to flow uh, there's nothing to be done at all uh, except for enjoying uh, the fact that you're doing something wonderful being here with your good friends uh, apart from that uh, just relax uh.
and uh, just uh, remember as you do this uh, that you are just relaxing and being at ease uh, and the world outside is just doing its own things uh, it's not of your concern at all what is happening outside uh, your job is just to relax and to go with the flow uh, whatever happens in the world is irrelevant uh, and as you do this you can be like the stillness at the eye of the storm uh, even though things are happening around uh, you can still be at ease within uh, and this is an important part of the meditation practice uh. As you just sit back and relax, uh, again it really matters the kind of attitude you have in your meditation. Uh, and try to see the positive aspects of meditation. Uh, as you wait for the mind to calm down, uh, also nudge the mind very gently. Uh, nudge it towards seeing the peace that is available, uh, even in the middle of all the activities. Uh, nudge it towards seeing the unburdening from all the activities of the world uh, not yet from feeling the kindness of all the kalyanamitas uh, all the good spiritual friends you have on this path uh, what a wonderful thing it is to be able to share a spiritual time together uh, with so many other good people uh, and as you create this positive attitude within her uh, this is where meditation really starts to happen uh,
everyone. So we are coming close to the end, uh, not quite there yet. Uh, uh, just please spend just a few moments just to review the meditation today. Uh, and if you do feel a bit more at ease and relaxed and peaceful and mindful or whatever, uh, ask yourself why that is the case. Uh, what have you done or not done during the meditation to enable the peace to arise? Uh, Okay, so that is the um, end of the meditation for now. So let's just have a uh, short break, 10 minutes or so, and I'll see you back again in 10 minutes. Sir.